Hey there! Today we're going to do things a little bit differently from what I usually do and I don't do this kind of stuff a lot nor is it really my intention to do this kind of stuff a lot but once in a while I may. So let me explain please. I'm going to show you a fountain pen today which is I think an interesting project um, but that is exactly what it is. It is a project and what happened was uh, a few months ago I was contacted by a kind gentleman called Lucas uh, and he is uh, in, in Belgium and he is making a fountain pen out of acrylic uh, with an ebonite feed uh, that takes a Zebra G nib which is one of those super flexible dip nibs. Um, that is not unique, there are all kinds of companies that, that, that do that uh, but he showed me some pictures and I thought you know that's actually a very interesting pen. So the thing is that his pen really is a project in progress so he was very interested in getting some input on the pen and as I said even though I typically don't really do those kinds of things I, I do think this one is interesting enough to share this project is, is interesting enough to share so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to show you the pen I'm going to cover the parts of the pen I'll do a writing sample I'll tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it but Lucas is very interested in your input, so I would like you to think about a couple of things. Is this something you're interested in buying? Uh, what kind of price would you be willing to pay for this? Uh, how would you like to see this made available? Uh, would you, does he need a website to sell this? Did, would you buy through Kickstarter? Would you support a Kickstarter? Etc. Think about those things. Feel free to leave a comment below the video. That's how Lucas will know, all right? So I'm not going to give you his email address because I don't want to share private information like that, but just leave your comments below. He will see it, he will have a look at it, and I think that'll be an interesting bit of input. And again, because I know that a lot of people really like these, these uh, flex nib insert pens, I thought this would be worth it. So let's do that now, and uh, uh, let's see what, uh, what happens. So the pen, right? I'll show you the parts in just a second, but this is the, these are the, uh, the, the basics of the pen, right? Acrylic, as I said, nice ebonite feed, zebra G nib insert, and it is actually a piston filled pen, which I think is quite nice. So I'm going to tilt the camera down. Let's have a look at the parts of the pen. Okay, so here we go with the uh, Le Piston as Lucas uh, calls it. Le Piston de Lucas. Nice, simple box. I like this. Sorry, that was me hitting a cable that's uh, hanging off the desk. Um, simple. This reminds me of Domino's. If you've ever played Domino's, you may know what I mean. If you haven't, then you may not. Uh, nice, simple. And here we have the pen. Okay. Uh, fairly nice, I would say, uh, with a clear barrel, which is kind of cool. I have used up quite some ink, but that is what happens when you have a flexing nib like this. So let's look at the, the parts of this pen. Very clear acrylic, clear acrylic cap and barrel, and then you have this, um, I suppose it is a blind cap. It's fairly long uh, and it's a different material, which I think is it's kind of a nice splash of color. This would be something you could comment on. Do you like this or, or would you like to see it all clear? Okay. Pen uncaps. It is a slip cap. Um, it does post and it stands up, uh, which is not necessarily something you need, but it is something that's interesting. Now, as I did this, there was a drop of ink. Okay, so I, I wouldn't necessarily stand up. I had Lucas mentioned that he, some of the pens that he makes, he you you put them up and there is no leakage. Others do have a bit of leakage, so that that varies a little bit. But I mean, then again, who would who would stand up his pen like that. Okay, so you have that barrel, barrel tapers down, uh, end of the blind cap, same material as the rest of the blind cap, and here we actually have the piston. It is hollow, as you can see, so ink can actually go in there, which I think is interesting, that does increase the ink capacity. Of course, uh, say Noodles does a similar thing on the, uh, on the Ahab, um, but it is interesting. Um, piston can get a little stuck. Of course I won't operate it now because it's full of ink and all the ink will squirt into the cap. Um, but that is, uh, uh, the, the, the piston does work. It does push in pretty much all the way and you can pull it out again. There are some ribs here to uh, to hold on to it 
a bit more easily. Okay, uh, there is no clip on this, um, and on the on the cap, I mean, the barrel tapers down, and there you have your section. You can see the Zebra G insert. Uh, one thing, of course, with Zebra G nibs is they have a finite lifespan. Uh, they will start to corrode. I think this is the titanium coated one, uh, which lasts a little longer, but at some point they will corrode. So you will need to pull it out, put in a new uh, nib. Feed is ebonite. Uh, I have the feeling this is a noodler's feed. I could be wrong, but it really looks like one of the Ahab uh, uh, feeds. So there you have it. Uh, if you really want to, as I said, you can post the, uh, the, the, the pen. In my mind it becomes a bit bulky because of the big cap, uh, but for me it's also quite comfortable to use unpost. And that's one thing I will say, it is a... I like that sort of cigar shape. Um, it's, it's comfortable and the section, you can sort of hold it as highly as you want because there are no annoying threads anywhere along that ridge. Now we really need to do is see how it writes. We are dealing with the dip nib. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, so I'm going to call it Lucas Le Piston because that's what he put on the box. Uh, the ink is just Visconti purples, nothing fancy. Don't forget that these dip nibs are not tipped. So you are going to experience feedback as you write. And I bet this sounds pretty horrid on the camera, but it's not as scratchy as you may think it is, but you will definitely feel that feedback. Okay, there you go. I don't think there were any real skips, maybe this, maybe that, but I I think this was me. Um, not at all bad. I have definitely seen these types of dip nib uh, uh, fountain pens that people create that have considerably worse flow. So it, it, it is in that regard nicely tuned. As to its wetness, well, uh, just like this, it's it's not a gusher, um, but you see it's, it has a, a nice flow. Of course, the real bit of interest is the flex, right? That's, I think, what you would buy this for. So let's see how that pen performs. I'm exerting more and more pressure. Again, this is a flex dip nib, so I would not recommend doing this with your fountain pen. Uh, but, I mean, your regular fountain pen, but... I don't think that is particularly horrible. Now, I'm going to... Adjust. I'm not a real flex writer, right? So I, I have to make do with what I've got. slow down a bit more but I'm really pushing it here you can see there is quite some uh, some flex to be had and again I'm really pushing it to its limit here if you don't go so hard on it you can actually have quite some decent speed on it I would say uh, so I really don't think this is that terrible I have seen worse now, reverse writing here, that's that's a joke, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a super fine nib anyway, but for those of you who really enjoy that, I guess it's possible, as you can see there. So, pen, writing sample. Let's see what I like about it, and what I not like about it. Okay, what do I like about the pen and what do I not like? People wanted to see my face more, so I thought maybe we should do it this way. But then again, maybe we should not. Um, sorry. Humor. <laughs> yes, funny. Okay, Le Piston. What do I like about it, what do I not like about it? Well, there's a couple of things I like. Uh, I like the craftsmanship. There's no two ways about it, it's, it's a well-made pen. It's the, the acrylic is very highly polished, it's super clear, that does require skill, that does require time and effort, so I, I do really appreciate that. Um, I like that it writes, uh, that sounds very obvious, but I have seen these types of pens uh, that 
don't write so well. The, 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 the dip nib inserts, sometimes the pens leak, sometimes they barely write, sometimes they hardly function. This, is, this doesn't seem to be one of them. It's clearly put together with attention and it does really work. So that's, that's great. Um, as I said, I like the design and looks. And of course the concept you can ask yourself, why do I want this? Well, the reason you would want this is that you have this super high flexibility of a dip nib, but in a pen with a built-in reservoir. So you can write for a lot longer than you would with a dip nib. We have to dip and write a bit and dip again, etc. What are some of the things I don't like so much? Or, I'm going to zoom out a little bit because you only see my head. Um, what are things I don't like so much? Well, there are a couple of things too. I found it a little hard to ink up. Um, as I said, this, this piston, it has a, a piston seal and that can get a little tight. Now that is not unique to this pen. Any type of syringe type filler, whether it's an Edison draw filler or other types of pens, that can happen. One thing that does typically help is if you take the piston and don't push it, but you just turn it. That typically breaks the seal a bit and then you can pull and push it out a bit more easily. One thing to be aware of is that the hole in this blind cap fits very snugly over that piston. You see, it's, it's, a, it's a very snug fit. And the issue with that is that there is quite a bit of material in there, and you can catch the piston on that. And if I push down now, I'm going to force out all the ink. The advantage of this is that it is a very nice tight fit, so it doesn't rattle around or anything. There's a, a positive to every negative, so to speak. Uh, the shape of the pen can be a little hard to use for people with smaller hands. I, I had Aziza use it. She loves this type of concept. Uh, the, she has a Desiderata pen and such, other brands that, that, that do this. She said she found it a little hard because the section doesn't really have any features. It's not hourglass shaped or barrel shaped or something, so there isn't really anything to hold on to. I didn't personally really have that issue, but then my hands are bigger than hers. So um, maybe if you have very small hands, See if you can try it out somewhere. That's difficult because these are not carried by a shop, but ask your friends. Um, so there's that. Um, as always, with a pen that has a dip nib as a nib, there are specific issues. Uh, one of these specific issues is that the nib will corrode. The titanium nib, so covered with titanium, will last a bit longer, but at some point or another it's going to corrode and there's nothing you can do about it you would have to replace the nib. So whereas with a standard fountain pen you buy it and your nib will last you your whole lifetime, with these nibs that's definitely not the case. Another issue is these nibs are not tipped. Dip nibs are not tipped typically. Um, see what I did there? And um, that means that the writing experience is going to be a bit less smooth. That's the way it is. It is a bit of technique that comes into play there. If you've done, if you've used them a lot, you've done this a lot, you can typically manipulate them a little bit better, but even then you are going to feel feedback. That's just the way it is. Now the final thing I wanted to say was you are dealing with a clear cap and on purpose as I was recording this I've been waving it around a little bit. Nothing too violently and yet you can definitely see uh, there is ink in the cap. It has pulled a bit at the bottom and there's a ring of ink there almost unavoidable. Many pens have that, but in this case, because you have that, that nib and feed insert, I think this pen may be a little bit more prone to it. Um, yeah, so there actually is ink. Is it terrible? I really don't know. Is that a deal breaker? That depends on you. What I will say is, I mean, I'm talking about the ink, um, what I will say is you do get an unparalleled flexibility. There is not a fountain pen in the world, a modern fountain pen in the world that will do this. If you have a vintage flex wet noodle, that's a different story, but then go out and find a vintage flex wet noodle. Um, you're probably going to pay more than you would for this pen. Okay. Having said all of that, Lucas, thanks a lot for sending me the pen. I really appreciate it. And guys, again, Lucas is looking for input. So, whatever your thoughts are, please share them in the comments below. Lucas can read them. You can have a look and comment on everything you like. Uh, what price would you pay? What do you like of the material? What do you like of the design? Uh, what do you not like? What would you like to see different, etc. I've tried to give you as objective an overview as I could. 
Um, right now, can you get these in the shop? No, does Lucas sell them? Not really on a large basis, but he's looking for methods to do that, right? So if you have any ideas on that, let him know as well. Okay, again, it is not my intention to do a whole series of these types of videos where I ask people's opinions on pens, but in this case, I chose to do that because I thought, I know these flex nib inserts resonate well with a lot of people, and that was my choice, all right? Hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.